All right, this is the test review for Algebra 1 Part A. This is test 1's review, so it should be pretty easy to match up at this point in the semester. Make sure that if you did, remember to bring your um, test review home or wherever you're watching this, these papers here, that you actually uh, follow along on the test. Most of the problems I'm actually writing on uh, or working on, I rewrote the question out. The reason that I did it is because a lot of times the camera that I have is not good enough to be able to show you what the questions actually say and it's really annoying to try to make it uh, bring everything up to the camera each time so instead uh, I sometimes rewrite the problems out so you may see me moving the camera up and down like I'm about to move it up and down right now hopefully to no negative impact or anything there we go. So see, it gives me a little bit more room. But if I try to use the actual test paper, it doesn't work nearly as well. So if you see that bump up and down, it's just something that you have to deal with. And you also get this awesome glare off the uh, screen that I'm using. I'm trying to match the camera up while I talk, which is probably a really bad use of time. Anyway, uh, the first one I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do all of them, so you have to pay somewhat close attention to what I'm doing, is number one. <coughs> This is what number one looks like if you uh, bring up your review. It says uh, one third times the quantity uh, 21m plus 27. Now, if you remember, if this one third is touching this parenthesis, then that means you need to multiply because if they touch, they multiply, right? So I'm going to do one third times 21. Nice thing about the calculator is that it does do fractions. So you hit the BC button there. I'm trying to do this without the glare so much, but good luck with that. Hit the BC button. Type in one third, and then you'll multiply by 21, and you end up with 7. And that's 7m. Then you'll do one third times 27. Same basic concept, except I moved my fingers too quickly and didn't get anything I could use. Right there. And that answer gives me 9. So my final answer should be 7m plus 9. And there it is. So the answer to number one is B. If it's touching, make sure you do multiply. Make sure you multiply each one. Pay close attention to the signs. The next one I'm going to do from the review is number four. Number four is a combining like terms question. It's really not that hard if you pay close attention. Now, when we did the blocks thing where we threw them on the floor and put them by color, M squared and N are not the same thing. Remember, they have to have the same letter and uh, exponent on that letter to be considered like terms. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and mark anything with the M squared in this pink highlighter. So here's another one. Everything else, or at least the next letter, for N, I'm going to choose green. In this question, I kind of spoiled it. It actually does include all the rest of the possible answers, but doesn't always have to work that way, so it looks a bit a little bit like pink and green Christmas. I'm going to combine the m squareds first. This is 2.5 plus 5.3. So you do 2.5 plus 5.3, and you get 7.8. So it's 7.8 m squared, which means these two answers, A and B, there's no way. On the flip side of it, I do 7.8 minus 3.2 minus 5.9. Now remember to only use the signs in front of the numbers. Don't like add additions or subtractions or whatever. Being mathematically whimsical isn't always the best plan. So 7.8 minus 3.2 minus 5.9, and you get negative 1.3, and that is n. So I'm just going to pick the answer that matches it which is D. So the answer to number four is D. Number eight. So on your little review there, go to number eight. A boat builder wants to make a model of a schooner, which is a type of sail with at least two masts. Is that the thing that they put the sails on? So it has two big posts that have sails on them. Um, the schooner is 34 meters in length. If you see numbers, you should probably circle them and anything in their general vicinity. And it has a beam of eight meters. And this tells me that the measure of the widest point of a ship is called the beam, which means this is the width, essentially. So it's 34 in length, 8 wide. Now, if the builder wants to buy, uh, wants her model to be 1.2 in length, what does the length of the beam have to be? Now, 
in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, you probably talk about ratios. If I knew two things about something, and I know one like item of a second thing, I can figure out the, th the, the other part of it that I need. So say I have, the, in my original boat, I have a length of 34 and a width of 8. Now in my model, I have a length of 1.2 and a width of, I don't know yet. So what I'm going to do is make a ratio or a fraction for the first one. So I'm going to put 34 over 8. And I'm going to set that equal to the comparative fraction based on what the model is supposed to look like. The hard part is I have to remember that this is the length and this is the width. So I know exactly where to put this 1.2 because if length went on the top here, I need to put length on the top over here. I'm going to put x there to say I don't know. Then I'm going to do what's cross multiply and divide. So I do 1.2 times 8 divide by 34 and my final answer is 0 0.2. 2.8. So my x is equal to 0 0.28. So I'm going to go down here and look for it, and it's right there. So if you have, I have the one boat, and I have two pieces of information about it. I know something about the length, and I know something about the width. In my model, I know the length to that as well. So see how there's a match, a length to a length? If I'm looking for another width, and I know the first one, you just set up a fraction, set it equal to another fraction, then you cross multiply and divide. So the answer is 0 0.28. Number 9 is the next one I'm going to look at. It's one of those you need to know the terms questions. The quotient of j and 8. Real fast, a quick review of the words. Sum means add. Uh, difference is subtract. Product is multiply. Quotient is divide. Then, oops, then means you flip the order of the numbers. So if it's a 6 less than 5, you need to put 5 minus 6. Flip order of numbers, that's the symbol for numbers. And quantity. Quantity means parentheses. So back up to the number 9, the quotient of j and 8. Well, that means divide, so I have to find that one that means divide, or represents divide. This is touching, so that's times, that's not it. This shows minus, this shows adding, so it's this one. Remember, in algebra, fractions represent divide. Number 14 says 3 times the sum. Now, it doesn't say 3 times b, and it doesn't say 3 times f. So if you see 3 times, and then it says something else here, that probably means you're going to have a parenthesis, even though it doesn't say quantity. So 3 times the sum of b and f. So I'm going to skip over the 3 times thing for a second. And think about the sum of b and f. Well, sum means add, so I'm looking for something that has b plus f in it. This one doesn't. This one has a b and an f in it, and so does this one. But if I'm doing 3 times the sum, then I have to choose this one. This one says 3 times b, but this doesn't say 3 times b. It says 3 times the sum. This one's just adding everything together, so there there's no times in it at all, so that's out. So this is the only one that makes any sense. The next one I'm going to do is number 16. I've got to order the square root of 9 over 2. Uh, I think in the actual question, 0.5 comes next, then 1 over 6, then 1.6, and then the square root of 4. Now remember, if I'm going to do from least to greatest, which is what this asks me to do, smallest number goes first. In order to make that comparison, I need to put everything in decimal form. So I'm going to go into my calculator, hit the square root button, and do 9 over 2, and close it out. Oops. There we go. 9 over 2, hit enter, and it gives me 2.12. So underneath it, I'm going to write 2.12.
This one's fine. You can just rewrite it if you want. You don't have to. 1 over 6, BC, 1 over 6. And you need to hit the fraction decimal button. 0.16 repeating. So 0.16, and the next number would be a 6, and that's probably good enough to make the comparison. And I might want to put a repeating there, but it doesn't matter. 1.6, and then the square root of 4 is, of course, 2. Now, and I'm going to write 2.0, by the way. Now I'm just going to put them on top of each other and then find the smallest one to the largest one. So I'm going to make a little column where I line up those decimal points. And 2.0. So I make a nice little column there. I'm going to compare them on the left first because I'm finding the least I'm gonna look for the smallest one well two can't be it so it's out and then this one and then this one are also out because zero is smaller than both one and two so after I look at that level I'm gonna look at these two things to see which is smaller well the one point one is much smaller than point five because one is the smallest number so that means this is my first number in sequence so I can go ahead and write down down here that the first thing I'm gonna have is this which is 1 over 6. Now that would make this 0.5 come next so I might want to write a 2 next to it just to remind myself. Now I have to compare 1.6, 2.0 and 2.12. I'm going to mark these out. 1 is smaller than both of these so the 1.6 comes next. Then I just compare 2.12 and 2.0. 2.1 is more than 2.0 so this one comes next and 2.0 is the square root of 4 and finally 2.12 will show up which is the square root of 9 over 2 so all I need to do is find the answer that matches this one this set here so the answer is C it took a little bit of extra time to do it but if you write the decimal forms out and then make a nice little column for yourself things are very easy after that uh, number 17 I'm actually going to review on the paper itself because I don't think it looked like a lot of writing to rewrite it, and there was no need. Uh, number 17 says, to which subset of real numbers or subsets does the number 22 belong? Now, if you can rem remember back, and you may not be able to, I've got rational and irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are the ones that go on forever. So if you put them in the calculator they would be like 3.416 dot 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 pi is one of those rational numbers are things you can make into fractions two-thirds or anything with a decimal that ends 1.75 or even one that has a repeating decimal and then also regular numbers too so like two is a rational number from here you're uh, essentially dealing with integers and if you remember this it's like if you're this then you're this too. Once you make this decision you can't go you can't be integer and irrational. Integers are negative numbers that are just regular numbers. Zero and then counting numbers one two three four. The next smallest one would be whole numbers. That would be zero and one two three and the last one are the natural numbers and like children natural numbers are numbers that you can count so one two three on up forever so if you're natural you're also a whole number an integer and rational if you're a whole number you're also an integer and rational on up but if you start at rational you can't go down that's just not how it works so it asked me about 22 well my kid can count to 22 so it means it's a natural number my four-year-old can anyway um, if it's a natural number it's also a whole number if it's a whole number it's also an integer and if it's a whole an integer it's also a rational number so when I look at the question I need to find the one that has all of those integer rational natural whole so it is D pretty simple as long as it meets the criteria for natural it includes all of those groups except for irrational which is totally different now uh, the next one we're gonna look at is number 22. So turn your little paper to 22. This is the what kind of statement is it thing. 
It says uh, 9p plus 8 equals 10p plus 7. They want to know if this is true or false or open. Now a true statement is something like 2 plus 3 equals 5, because we know that to be true. A uh, false statement would be 2 plus 3 equals 4, because 2 plus 3 isn't 4. An open statement is a, number, is a statement with a variable in it. So it's possible that it's true, but it could also be false depending on the value of the variable. So in this case, since I have p here and p here, this is an open statement because there's a variable. That one's really easy, but I just wanted to cover it. Number 25 says solve using mental math. It says x plus 3 equals 17. So I need to figure out what do I need to um, add to 3 to get 17. Well, I know that uh, 3 plus 14 is 17, so the answer to number 25 is just C. We've got, um, I think, two more. No, yeah, two more. Not a big deal. Number 29 says evaluate u over z plus x times y squared for u equals 20, x equals 4, y equals 7, and z equals 10. This seems like a ridiculous question. It's not really that hard. u is 20. Z is 10 plus, now remember if they're touching that means times. So my suggestion is you put this one in parentheses and leave this one on the outside. So X is 4, Y is 7, and that's 7 squared. So something like that. If I type it in, 20 over 10 is just 2. So this is going to be 2. Uh, and by the way, order of operations would say to do the square first. So 7 squared is 49. 7 to the second power. And then I do 49 times, uh, since I did the division already, I would do multiply next. So I do 4 times 49. And 196. And then you add 2 to that. And your final answer is 198. I'm going to make sure that's one of the answers before I sign off on that. It is. It's D. And by the way, you should be able to type it all into the calculator and it will work perfect for you. So you do 20 over 10 plus 4 times 7 squared. And you type it in and it gives you 198. The only thing you have to think about is you need to make sure that you put parentheses when it's a multiply like that. Otherwise, you just put your numbers in the calculator and it doesn't matter. The last one is number 48. It's a distributive property question, so, you know, baby goes bathroom. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. M. Then you do negative 4 times negative 8. They're both negative, so your answer is 32. And then you do negative 4 times 10m, and you get negative 40m. From here, we just need to combine like terms. So I'm going to take anything with m and just color it with this highlighter and leave the other two there because, you know, we'll get those later. This is an add-subtract relationship, so I just look at what they say. Negative 24 minus 40 gives you negative 64m. And then I say 18 plus 32, and it gives me 50. And I put these in front, so I'm going to have to flip it around to get to the answers. So I look for positive 50. Here it is. Negative 64. Here it is. I just wrote it in a different order. It doesn't really matter. So the answer is C. So that's the review. Um, if you have any questions before you take the test, please ask them, and we would be delighted to help you before you start. So good luck on your test. and. Try your best.